Stout Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's star, Lon McAllister in Golden Harvest. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, starring Lon McAllister, tells of a young man named Cyrus McCormick. This year, across the great grain lands of America, our farmers reaped their harvest with the aid of the best equipment. And this was so largely because of that young man who lived on a farm in Rockbridge County, Virginia in the 1820s, where our story begins. Oh, Mrs. McCormick! Oh, Mrs. McCormick! Ma'am, could I speak in person, would you? What is it, Joe? Something wrong? Oh, Mrs. McCormick, I wouldn't have the master think I did this, but ma'am, he's down in the blacksmith shop and his like is bursting white hot with anger. At you? He's fixing himself a whip. Oh, please come, ma'am. Oh, Joe, I have so much to do here, I can't. But it's your son. Cyrus? Mr. McCormick, he's fixing a whip, Cyrus. Oh, oh please come, ma'am. He's so red hot mad, he'll whip him senseless. <laughs> Pa, Pa, don't. Pa, I'll never do it again. Pa, I promise. I'll work. I promise I'll work, Pa. Robert, Robert, what's wrong? Keep out of this, Polly. Oh, what's he done? Cyrus isn't a child anymore to be whipped. This has been coming to Cyrus for a long time. Last year it was the same. Year before it was the same. You better tell your Ma why I'm going to whip you, Cyrus. Go ahead, speak up. Well, I... I've been working since four this morning, Ma, and I was cutting wheat with Joe in the, in the South Meadow, and... This was 11 o'clock. The day wasn't even half over. And when Pa came, he, he found me flat on my back, taking a nap. Yes, it seems that Joe was part of this. He agreed to keep on cutting while Cyrus took the nap. Well, Joe was supposed to keep an eye out for Pa, but, well, he got tired, too. So he sat with his feet in the brook, and then Pa came over the hill and saw us. There you have it. Polly, what's your judgment? Well, I'm afraid Cyrus should be punished. Of course he should. But not with a whip, Robert. With what, then? Well, there's other ways to teach the boy a lesson. Cruelty isn't one of them. Well, then, maybe work is. Cyrus, I'm going back to the fields now. Shop on your side and come out. I expect you in ten minutes. Yes, Pa. You're going to cut until sundown. Yes, Pa. Ma, you, you know I feel like I could die. Mm, we all do at harvest time. Why won't Pa hire more hands? It came. Everybody's harvesting at the same time, and everybody's trying to hire extra hands at the same time. I hate harvest. There's no use moaning. I hate harvest. Well, I do, too. But grain has to be cut, and it has to be cut when it's ripe. We can't control that. We all have to bend our backs or starve. That's harvest, and it's the same the world over. Cyrus, you better go out in the fields now. Yes, Ma. And I hope you'll remember this. Yes, Ma. I'll remember it all my life. Nowadays, most of us know harvest time only when we see the pumpkins, the corn and oak leaves, and gaily decorated store windows. But the truth is that for most of man's history, harvest time has been a heavy time. It was when Ruth gleaned in the fields of Boaz. It was when Cyrus McCormick cut and gleaned in his father's fields, year after year. And then one day... Come on, Joe. Give it a push. All right. I'll push it, and you hop on. Now hop on yourself. Sure. We'll both coast down the hill together. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Cyrus. Cyrus, Joe, get off that thing. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh, well, what's wrong, Pa? What in tarnation are you up to? Oh, well, Pa, harvest is over. We were only... I have, to have more respect for my property. But, but we aren't... Get doing... off, I tell you. But, oh, we found this whole thing behind the barn. I don't care where you found it. Take it back, Joe. I won't have it broken. Well, yes, sir, Mr. McCormick. We didn't think you attached no kind of value to this here contraption. I certainly do. It must be 15 years it's been laying around. 16. Next time, I have a little more respect for things I make. I'm mighty sorry, Pa. I didn't know we'd get you so head up. I put the hope of my life on that thing you call a contraption. What was it supposed to be? Worked for years on that and it failed. Uh, uh, what was you figuring to make, Mr. McCormick? Make a reaper. A reaper? I was trying to make a contraption that a horse could pull and it would cut grain. Imagine that. My, my, wouldn't that be the bomb of Gilead? But I failed. As long as man has lived, he's never found any way to build a reaper to lighten the load at harvest. Mm, makes my back feel better just thinking about it. You know, it's an odd thing a man is. Here he can invent steamboats and steam engines and spinning mills, but, but nobody's ever in the world invented a reaper. Problem's too complex. Just look at that thing I turned out. 
It is a queer contraption. Uh, it was just a lazy dream of mine. Put it behind the barn. Give me a hand here with the divider. Oh, sure, sure. Well, I uh, got that card in me. Oh, good for you. As soon as you finish this, we can rig the reel. Cyrus? Yes, Ma? Cyrus, how many times do I have to send word it's time to stop for dinner? Oh, come on in, Ma. Well, mercy, Jonas. Oh, Cyrus, you've got it all together. Almost. We will have by tomorrow, Mrs. McCormick. Come here, Ma. I, I want to show you how it'll work. Oh, it's no use, Cyrus. I'll never understand it. Oh, come on now. Here, here, sit down on this keg. Uh -huh. There. Whoops. It's all lopsided. How can the horse pull it away to one side of it? Well, he has to, man. Well, sure. If the horse walked in front, well, he'd trample the grain before it was cut. I see. So, so he pulls one main wheel behind him, and then out to the side of that is, is a little light wheel that, that holds the frame and the cutting knife. You, you see, man? Now, this is the knife. It slides back and forth. Now, the point is, when the knife hits the grain, you have to have something to keep it all from matting. And how do you do that? Well, we call this the fingers. Yeah, yeah, just like a comb. They stick out a little in front of the knife. Well, I thought that was the divider. Oh, no, man. Man. No, that flat thing on edge way over there, that's the divider. At the end of the knife? Yeah, that's it. It sticks out ahead of the knife, too. Yeah, like the prow of a ship cutting through water. It's the same idea. This goes through the grain, dividing the grain to be cut from the grain to be left standing until the next time around the field. I must say, Cyrus, it's a strange-looking animal. Well, that, that's the reel you're looking at now. Well, honey, I... Oh, no, wait, Ma, don't go. Now, now that thing that goes around like a paddle wheel in the air, mm -hmm. well, each time that little cross paddle comes down, it, it bends the grain back against the knife so it can be cut. Yeah, yeah, but gentle, easy-like. Because if it was rough... If it was rough, it would knock the ripe heads right off. But this way, the way Mr. Cyrus has it, it just takes that grain and lays it back on the platform like a soft baby sleeping. Well, I declare. Well, come on now, Cyrus, dinner. Oh, Ma, you don't appreciate the reaper. Of course I do, Cyrus. It all sounds perfect. When will I see it work? In two weeks. John Ruff has asked me over to his farm. Yeah, we're going, to, going over to show off. Demonstrate. Oh. He's inviting all the farmers from all around. Cyrus, I'm so proud of you. It'll be a heavenly blessing. Certainly will, ma'am. Then after the demonstrate, uh, Cyrus and me is going to drive all over this country with the reaper like an angel's chariot, lifting the load from all our backs. <laughs> Just look at Cyrus standing by his reaper. Aren't you proud of your son? I certainly am. Claire must be 75 people turned out to see him. So handsome, so confident. Well, I hope it's justified. What do you mean, dear? Polly, when no one in the history of man has succeeded. Oh, that don't mean our Cyrus came. I know Here's it. Was... him, everybody. I invited young McCormick here. Show you all how this reaper of his calculates to work. Go ahead, Cyrus. You got the most beautiful field of grain before you in old Virginia. Cut it. You ready, Joe? Ready, sir. Get up! Hop! Hop! Well, of all the jokes to get people out for. The two minute it breaks. Yeah, look at that green. Beautiful green, all matted down. Oh, man, Ruff's looking mighty mad. Robert. Yes, Polly. Don't you think you should tell Cyrus to stop cutting? I should think he'd have sense enough to see his failure. Sirs, McCormick! McCormick! Yeah? What is it? Stop that infernal machine! Come over here! <laughs> Ain't you got eye in your head to see what you're doing to my field? Well, there are an awful lot of rocks in that field, Mr. Ruff. Awful lot of fine wheat you're making into one fine big mess for me. Uh, well, well, excuse me, Mr. Ruff. Uh, it's mighty hilly here. And, and of course, there are some things that need adjusting. Sirs, it's your head that needs adjusting. <laughs> Don't know why I ever believed you. Well, sir, I couldn't... Trapping my grain down, knocking off the heads. That machine cuts like a wild man. Well, if you'd let me try again after dinner. Try again? When the whole field is ruined? Well, you try to get that crazy contraption off in my farm before I smash it. Go on with you. Off. Get that contraption off. <laughs> I know how you're feeling, son. All the months of work. 
and all the people laughing at me. Yeah, and calling out names to us. You'd think we'd done something wrong. You know what I'm going to do, Pa? I'm going way off and live alone. I, I just can't face people around here anymore. Mother's week and dinner. Well, I'll be in as soon as Joe and I get our scythes sharpened. Maybe I should have warned you against failure. It was bound to happen. Well, don't linger now. I'll see you in the house. Joe, hmm? what are you thinking? Oh, nothing much. I'm just all sorrow. Mm -hmm. What did you do with the Reaper? Stuck it out behind the barn with your pa. Yeah. I reckon that's the place for it, all right. Yeah, I reckon it is. You are listening to the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Lon McAllister and featuring Ed Begley, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. The DuPont Cavalcade continues, starring Lon McAllister as Cyrus McCormick and featuring Ed Begley as his father. Humiliated, bitter after the failure of his reaper, Cyrus settled on a farm in the back country. And finally... After months and months of angry seclusion, the fire of his bitterness burned out, and he returned to his family. Pa, I got an idea. Cyrus, I do hope you've come home to stay. What's on your mind, son? What have you been brewing all by yourself out there in the backwoods? Is it the reaper again, Cyrus? What? Another reaper? I thought you promised not to talk about that. Well, the other people are talking about it. About what? That old man Ruff kicking me off his field and everybody laughing at me? He's right, Polly. They are still laughing. Uh, just the same. Lots of folks keep asking me, isn't Cyrus ever going to finish his reaper? I wouldn't work on that reaper if it was the last thing between, between me and starvation. Cyrus, you mustn't be bitter. Well, I'm not bitter, Ma. I'm practical. Because I got a better idea, Pa. Well, what's that, son? Well, I've been thinking about a lot of things this year. I've been away alone. I'm 27 now, and it's time I do something with my life. What have you in mind? Well... You've saved some money, haven't you, Pa? Go ahead. Exactly what have you in mind? Iron. Iron? We can be iron masters. Oh, Cyrus, now you've been dreaming. Well, look what families amount to anything around here. The Weavers, the Mayberries, the Jordans, the Bryans, and they're all iron masters. They're wealthy and respected. And I'll tell you, nobody laughs at them, do they? Well, how'd you figure we might sit about it, Cyrus? Well... If we can find an ore bank with wood and water power close at hand, then about six to eight thousand dollars would build us a furnace and secure the mine and the timber. What would you operate on? Well, another six thousand would operate it. Well, that's risking a lot of money. Risking more than we have. It's no risk. Ore is selling for fifty dollars a ton at Richmond. That means we could easily clear four thousand a year. I've gone all over this with a, with a first-rate iron worker, and I know, Pa. Uh, Cyrus, this isn't something to be decided in a day, but. We, we'll think about it. We'll, we'll think. I know you will, Pa. And I know you'll go in with me. We could make a fortune. Oh, Cyrus, couldn't you be happy here with the little blacksmith shop trying another reaper? I told you to forget that, Ma. Now, don't get cross. Pa tried it for years and failed. I tried it and I failed. I'm, I'm not a fool, Ma. I, I know what's right for me. I'm going to be an iron master. And Pa is too. Aren't we, Pa? Who can tell the future? But maybe we will, son. Maybe we will. Dear Ma, I haven't written you since Pa and I left because I didn't want to say what I had to say. Things are bad, Ma. We've been struggling and sweating and slipping. we got creditors and sheriffs crawling all over us. You can figure to see us back home soon. We lost the ore bank, and we lost the furnace and foundry. Pa wants you to tell Mr. McChesney we're coming to see him. Looks like the only thing is to mortgage the farm we tried to leave. Mr. McChesney, my son and I have uh, come to you with a 
proposition. It doesn't seem to be a happy one. Well, it isn't for us. We're out of the iron business for good. We have nothing but bad memories and debts for the rest of our lives. Some of the debts won't wait five minutes. We need $2,000. What's your offer? In exchange for that, Cyrus and I will uh, deed over to you our 500-acre homestead of Walnut Grove. Hmm. Sounds agreeable. Now, if we meet our obligations to you, the farm will be returned. If you fail? Uh, if we fail, you can sell our homestead for your own reimbursement after giving 30 days' notice. Mr. McCormick, I'll go over this with my lawyer and have him draw papers to this effect. Agreeable? It is. Thank you. Cyrus, agreeable? It's acceptable, Mr. McChesney. I'd, I'd hardly call it agreeable. No, of course not. I can understand but, Cyrus, if you don't mind a little advice, say uh, $2,000 worth? Go right ahead. When you go back to the farm now with your father, settle down, buckle down, and really work the farm. That's what we intend to do. I hate to see a serious young fella jump all around from one thing to another, plunge here, plunge there, always looking for greener clover. You're certainly right there, Mr. McChesney. Believe me, Cyrus, the clover right on your farm is as green as you'll ever find. All you have to do is take out your scythe, sharpen it, bend your back and cut it. Joe, will you stop sharpening that scythe? What's wrong with that, Cyrus? It annoys me. But, Mr. Cyrus, the harvest is coming round. Well, that annoys me, too. Then, son, I think it's about time you get over that annoyance. Go ahead, Joe. Sharpen the scythe. Yes, sir, Mr. McCormick. I don't think you have any call to be bitter because we're back on our farm. Our farm? You mean McChesney's farm? I still don't consider your attitude befitting. Should I remind you that the iron business was your scheme, sir? I know it's my fault, but but I, I can't stand being back here and, and trapped again. It's our own doing, son. It's ours to face. Everything I've ever tried has failed, Pa. Now all that I face is to swing away my life with a scythe in one hand and, and a pack of debts on my back. That's right. It'll take us the rest of our lives to pay off. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Cyrus. Remember that uh, reaper you tried to build a while back? Now, Joe, let's not start that again. Cyrus is going to have to help on the farm before we lose everything. Well, I only thought maybe it was a way to make some money. It's a way to tinker away months and months and get nowhere. Is that right, Cyrus? I'm afraid that's right, Joe. You had our fling and our failure. Now the only thing left is to, well, to spit on our hands and sweat off the mortgage. Well, son... I'm going out to the field. What's on your mind, Joe? Oh, nothing, sir. There must be something. Well, while you've been away, folks kept talking about that reaper. Sure, they kept talking. And I kept thinking, but, but what good does that do? You know the only thing wrong with that reaper? No. What? It didn't work. <laughs> well, that's all, that's all. Now, I don't call that much wrong. But don't you think if you figured harder, you could make a better one? Yeah, I, I've kind of always thought if, if I'd only made the, the fingers out of iron in, instead of wood. Well, sure. Maybe after sundown, when we can't work in the fields... Cyrus! Yeah, well, we could work here in the blacksmith mm -hmm. shop. Cyrus, I'm waiting for you. Of course, the evenings won't give us the time we need, but, oh, but, but still, who can tell if we kept trying? Maybe after a while, we might get one that would run. Sure. Cyrus! I'm coming, Father! <laughs> Joe, mm -hmm. come here. Both those fingers this way on the front. Yes, Mr. Cyrus. Now, the trouble yesterday when we went out in the wet was the angle. I figure if we change the cutting About angle... About like this? Yeah, that's it. Now, with, with a heavier main wheel, we can stand it. Yeah. Because we've gained enough strength to take care of that extra drag. Cyrus, And let's put, let's put another reel on there. The blade should be wider, too. Be gentler on the right grain. Mm -hmm. Cyrus, look here. Huh? Oh, Ma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what are you all smiles about? But just look at these letters and have a paper with news. Uh... Dear sir, Hezekiah Green, who lives up your valley, was telling me that you've been fiddling around with a reaping contraption. He says he's seen you out cutting slick and easy as a razor. You hear that, Joe? Yes, sir, I did. He says he asked if you aim to make an extra few to sell. He says you says no, not till you got it exactly 100% right. Now, now I, I just want to say I got 500 acres of wheat every year. So as soon as you're ready to sell... Isn't that a wonderful letter? And here are two more. Oh, I tell you, words beginning to get around. Oh, what's in the newspaper? An invitation. Invitation? Mm -hmm. 
the Richmond Gazette invites you to demonstrate your reaper next month at the county fair. Oh. Everybody be there. The governor, the bay. You hear that, Mr. Cyrus? This will be the end of your sorrow. This will bring you fortune. Yeah, but what if it busts? What if it works out the way it did last time and everybody starts laughing? Uh-uh, can't work that way, Mr. Cyrus. Not with all these changes. Oh, you will accept, won't you, Cyrus? Your father thinks it's ready. He does? Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to know the truth? I think it's ready, too. <laughs> All right, Joe. You ready? All ready, Mr. Cyrus. The horse is hitched and everything's set. My dear friends from Virginia, as the orator of the day, I take pleasure in calling your attention to that young man over there by that horse with a strange device hitched up behind that horse, Cyrus McCormick. <laughs> now, now, my friend, with him is his field hand. They are about to demonstrate it. I wish you'd let us start, Joe, instead of talking so much. Before you lies a golden field of waving grain. You got your wrench, Joe? Mm -hmm. Have to work fast. Now, when right. I fire this revolver three times, the cutting will commence. And will so continue until the field is completely clear or the machine breaks down. Are you ready, Cyrus McCormick? Ready, sir. That's us, Joe. We're off. It was a fine demonstration, son. Congratulations. Thank you, Father. Joe, you did well. well thanks, Mr. McCormick. Cyrus, my boy, I'm a humble man before you. Let me shake your hand. Well, thank you, Senator. Friends, friends, <coughs> friends, quiet, please. The victory has been complete. The field has fallen before the reaper. We, we stand here, heads bared, tears in our eyes before this miracle. Reverend Green, will you lead us in prayer? Almighty God, from age unto age, thou hast continually revealed man as a creature at once limited and unlimited. Sadly limited, we fear, at many moments. Gloriously unlimited at this great moment. When through the agency of this young inventor, Cyrus McCormick, the future promises such abundance that already in our mind's eye, we can see men by the millions our tillers of the soil, for the first time in all history, begin to straighten their backs and walk upright, thanks to this reaper. Accept our thanks, O oh Lord, for this bounty revealed. Grant us wisdom in its use. Amen. 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 Holly. Wipe your tears. Let's be going. Joe, fetch the reaper. Yes, sir. Cyrus, I never thought any machine could cut that way. It was close. It was smooth. The grain lay lightly back the way I had always hoped to make mine do. Well, you were really doing it today, Father. Because I, I never would have built this machine if it, if it hadn't been for yours first. Well, better be starting along, son. Got some harvesting to do at home. to Lon McAllister and the Cavalcade players for tonight's story, Golden Harvest. Lon McAllister will return in a moment. And now, our star, Lon McAllister. Thank you. It was a wonderful experience appearing with the Cavalcade players. Ed Begley, my father, Irene Hubbard, my mother, Maurice Ellis, who was Joe, and all the rest of the Cavalcade cast. Now, as for next week's show, the star will be one of Hollywood's loveliest, Joan Caulfield. 
The story, a romantic adventure, Yankee Doodle Debbie. Don't miss it. Good night now and thanks. Night's original DuPont drama, Golden Harvest, was written by Halstead Wells. Music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Borries. The program is directed by John Zoller. Don't forget, next week, Joan Caulfield on the DuPont Cavalcade of America, which comes to you from the Belasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Chemistry.